WP aliens arrive at Earth and inform us that our solar system must regretfully be processed into rocks to throw at the invasion of the outer gods that has been ongoing for billions of years. Well, why don't you let us take a crack at it for a hundred years or so? What have you got to lose? The Council watches on in horror as a human-made dreadnought cracks the shell of an encroaching insectoid god. The massive 200-foot-long, 50-foot-thick tungsten spear impaled in its now-deceased carapace. Most aliens on the Council only understood energy weapons are ineffective on outer gods due to their physiology, essentially acting to drastically increase the entropy rate of the universe. Oddly enough, while energy weapons lose all power, physical weapons prove to be immune to the loss of energy. Proof of concept being a high-velocity piece of debris injuring an outer god. So, in a panic, they resorted to launching asteroids at the gods. It had been billions of years since a proper ballistic weapon had even been seen. So, of course, they ran out and started processing planets. Coming across humanity seemed to be something of a miracle, which was almost squandered in the ever-increasing rush to get more rocks. Now humanity has fully realized their potential, with alien technology filling in the gaps of human tech to bring railguns to life. Fifty years have passed, and it seems that only the most ancient and powerful outer gods remain. Even they fear humanity's utterly ruthless drive to conquer their newfound enemies. This fear is shared by the Council as well. In not even a century, a race of beings that barely lives to see the goal they promised have mobilized to the point of being an up-and-coming military force in the galaxy. The topic shifting from a desperate defense to finally being free of the threat of outer gods gave the Council relief, only for that relief to give way to anxiety towards humanity. A century has passed. The outer gods have been wiped out, and the galaxy can rest in peace but only for so long as a fearful council begins to make preparations of an offensive against the humans. There are naysayers, those who view turning on a race they brought in out of fear is a barbaric and cruel way of thanks. Unfortunately, fear rules as all the citizens of the galaxy can remember know is how brutal human war fighting can be. Although reluctant, the council begins to turn their weapons towards a new threat, humanity. The tension in the council room is suffocating. A very angry human holding the title of Supreme Admiral of Humanity's Fleets, alongside other human military high officers, are staring daggers at the assembled Galactic Council. Said council, currently pissing their metaphorical diapers, too gripped with fear to even begin to defend themselves. Not that they could defend unleashing a salvo of ion cannon shots on an unaware human cruiser. The Council had planned to cripple the human fleets with swift surprise attacks and corral them back to Earth and blockade them. The lack of a common enemy and fear had driven them to desperate measures. Those measures might have worked. Unfortunately, humanity has been waging war for nearly as long as they've been sentient. So, a surprise backstab was accounted for. The counterattack was so swift and brutal that an entire Council fleet was wiped out before they could surrender. Deciding to break the silence, the Supreme Admiral, René Goodfellow, lets out a tired sigh, followed by the most chilling words the Council had ever heard. You have one minute to unfuck your situation. If you fail, your fleets are gone. If you thought we mobilized quickly before, we'll do it so fast we'll be collecting your planets like marbles. While her words were cold, the sheer intensity in her gaze shook the Council to their cores. Her bright blue eyes hold what seems to be the unending malice that not only belongs to her, but to humanity as a whole. This is wrath beyond measure. Miss Goodfellow! A fist slams onto the council table, cracking it a bit. A captain stands in fury. While the admiral's anger had been calm, his was that of a whirlwind. You will address the admiral by her title. This isn't some friendly get-together. Before he could continue, Admiral Goodfellow places an authoritative hand on his shoulder, coaxing him back into his seat. Ah, right, Admiral Goodfellow. 
While our actions were despicable, you must... A fur-covered fist rockets into the councilman's face, sending him back into his seat. The representative of the Lycan people won't sit here while these sniveling cowards try to worm their way out of what he warned them against. Admiral, there is no true action we could take to undo the vile actions we've committed. All I am able to say is that you have my support with whatever course of action you take. I only ask that you spare the civilians any punishment. They had no hand in this betrayal. The silence that follows is deafening.